Spiders come in all shapes and sizes, and over 700 species of these arachnids are currently recognized in the state of North Carolina alone. The goal of today's video is to encounter the two largest species of orb-weaving spider that are native to this state. So let's go see if we can catch some spiders. Both of the species that we're searching for today can be found in the forested landscape, and both of them are known to spin pretty large, very obvious webs. So to find these spiders, all I really had to do was look in areas where they might place a web, which is basically anywhere that there might be flying insects. Okay, what we have right here in this web is the black and yellow garden spider, commonly called the riding spider because of these designs here in the center. And this is actually the largest individual that I have ever worked with. I would say this is definitely a mature adult female and it's possible that she even has eggs there in her abdomen. You can see it's quite inflated. And this is the time of year when they will be depositing their egg sacs. Those egg sacs will kind of um, gestate over the winter period, and then they'll hatch as teeny little spiderlings in the spring. Now, black and yellow garden spiders are called such because of their coloration and because of their tendency to pop up in people's gardens. You can find these a lot of times around human settlements. They will spin webs between trees, between garden plants, between fence posts, things like that. Basically, anywhere they think an insect might enter their web, that is where these will create a web. So the way they hunt, they make these big webs. An insect flies into it, gets trapped in that sticky silk. They'll wrap them up, inflict a neurotoxic bite, and then they will kind of drain out the insides of that insect like a little smoothie. Now, their bite is not medically significant to humans. There's no reason to fear these spiders. And as you can see, even if you do handle them, they are extremely docile and very well behaved. This, though, is not the largest orb-weaving spider we have in North Carolina. We are actually searching for one of those today. They're cousins, and they look similar, but we'll get one of those in front of the camera and show you that there are also some pretty distinct differences between those two spiders. But wow, that is beautiful. Okay, this is the golden silk spider. Hang on, let me see if we can catch her. Oh, oh, hey, she's running, she's going down. Oh, crud, she's dropping, she's dropping. Got her, got her. Hey, oh, beautiful. Okay, this amazing arachnid right here is the golden silk spider. And this is actually considered the largest spider by leg span in the state of North Carolina. Now, golden silk spiders go by a pretty wide variety of common names, including the banana spider. And that is a name that has earned them a pretty bad reputation for being potentially dangerous to humans. However, the golden silk spider is not closely related to the wandering spiders that occur down in Central and South America. And those wandering spiders, those phanutria, those are the real banana spiders, the ones that can actually inflict a potentially deadly bite. Golden silk spiders cannot do that. These are actually orb-weaving spiders, and they are actually the largest members of that group of spiders that we have here in North Carolina. Now, their official common name, the golden silk spider, does come from the fact that their silk has a kind of yellow golden hue to it. It is theorized that the reason this webbing has that coloration is to reduce bird entanglement with the web, because if a bird hits the web, it's probably gonna knock it down, and then they're going to have to rebuild it. Now that we've met our two titanic orb weavers, let's learn about the similarities and differences between these incredible arachnids. Now at first glance, these might even look like literally the same spider, right? But there are actually some pretty distinctive differences. So if we look at the abdomen, you can see that the black and yellow garden spider does have dots, but they are very distinctive. Whereas our golden silk spider, these dots are a little more random. Now also the legs of our golden silk spider, you'll see that these dark bands have kind of like fuzzy leg warmer type things on them. Whereas our black and yellow garden spider, their legs don't have quite as much fuzz. Now ecologically, they're very similar spiders. Both of these are gonna spin large webs, sticky webs that entrap their prey, and then they're going to inflict a bite in order to paralyze that prey before sucking out the insides, but they live in very different habitats. Typically, our golden silk spiders are going to be more coastally associated. These are actually a tropical species that ranges just up into North Carolina. We're actually at the northern extent of golden silk spider range here, whereas black and yellow garden spiders are much more cold tolerant, and you can find these at higher elevation areas and further north here in North America than the golden silk spiders. So at least in North Carolina, you can think of the golden silk spider as kind of the coastal queen, whereas our black and yellow garden spider is more of the Piedmont or mountains dominant species of spider. But neither of these are dangerous to humans. Neither of them are aggressive spiders, even when handled. 
They're really fun to observe from a distance. If you do have them in your garden, they're free pest control for things like mosquitoes, which actually do carry diseases, which can do some pretty serious damage. Mosquitoes kill about 100,000 times more people a year than spiders do. So basically, spiders are the hero of the story. Thank you so much for joining me on today's adventure and learning about the black and yellow garden spider and golden silk spider. Here's your sneak peek at the species that'll be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. Until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.